Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about the measures of variability. In my previous video, we have talked about the shapes of distribution. If you haven't watched the video yet, please click the suggested video above. Now first, in our measures of variability, imagine that you are in a restaurant. You think in terms of, oh, that tasted sweeter the last time I bought it, or Dish number two from restaurant X tasted creamier this time than last time. We feel the difference, not the average. Or maybe consider that you are doing online shopping. The last time I ordered from Amazon, I received that package in four business days. But in other times, I receive my order usually after six days on standard shipping. Or dining out. Yesterday, when I went to Taco Bell during lunch hour, I was in and out of there within 10 minutes. But on other days, I'm there for my whole lunch hour. Or if you're web browsing, since WebXO company changed their user interface, it now takes me at least 3 more minutes to do what I used to do with the old user interface. All these examples or examples of measuring variability. Now, a measure of variability refers to how spread out a group of scores is. The terms variability, spread, and dispersion are synonyms and refer to how spread out a distribution is. There are three different ways to calculate variability. First is the range. Range is the difference between the highest and lowest scores. Second is the variance. Variance is how spread out or far away a score is from the mean. And the third is the standard deviation. The standard deviation is loosely defined as the average amount a score differs from the mean. If you have watched my lesson about measures of central tendency, we used to compute or find the three different measures one at a time. Now for our measure of variability, I tried to combine it with just one set of data and then we find the range, variance, and standard deviation all at once to make it easier for you and so that we can save up a lot of time explaining. Now for our range that is represented by R that is equal to the maximum score less the minimum score. The formula for our variance is S squared is equal to the summation of X squared less the summation of X quantity squared over N all over N. And the formula for our standard deviation is S is equal to the square root of S squared. Now, don't get me wrong, I feel you. The formula are a little bit complicated or complex for some, but when we take this into action or computation later, I'm making sure that this is not a very hard type of computation. Now, I have given you all the formulas. Next is I'm going to introduce to you what corresponds to those variables in the formula. R is equal to the range, S squared is equal to the variance, S is equal to standard deviation. This symbol is called sigma, which means the sum of, meaning we will just add up all the numbers. Or most of our professors would code like the summation of. And then X are the numbers from your data set. X squared are the numbers from your data set squared is the total number of numbers you have in your data set. Now let's apply our formula. I put a little side note on the left side to remind us the formula for range, variance, and standard deviation. Now here is our sample data and these are the variables that represent those that we are looking for in our data set. The first step is to list each of the numbers in your data set vertically from least to greater. So we are going to write a column on the right side that looks like that. 
then we label them as X because X are the data in your data set. Now our first step is to make a list that is arranging them from these to greatest. Again, just like what we have done in our measures of central tendency, I am still going to apply the same procedure here. We need to cross out if the number is already listed so that we will not jumble the numbers or we will not forget a number that we have not listed. The least number is 1. We cross out 1 and write it in the table. Next, we have number 2, which appeared twice and we will write them down also. Next, 3, write it in the table. 4, that appeared 3 times. And then we write 3 number 4s in the table. Then we have number 6, 7, and 9. First step 2, find n by counting the numbers in the data set over x. Now we count the numbers or how many numbers are there in the data. We have 10 numbers. So n is equal to 10. Step 3. Find R by subtracting the minimum score from the maximum score. Remember that R is the range and our maximum score is 9. Our minimum score is 1. 9 less 1 is equal to 8. And that is our range. Step 4. Find the summation of x by adding all numbers in the x column. To find the summation of x, we just add 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 6 plus 7 plus 9. The summation of x is equal to 42. Then we write it down. Step 5. We square all the numbers in the x column and write the answers in the x squared column. Remember that squaring a number is simply multiplying the number by itself. Let's start with the first number. First, we should write x squared above aligned with x, the same row with x. And then we proceed to squaring 1, that is equal to 1. 2 squared is equal to 4. 3 squared is equal to 9. 4 squared is equal to 16. 6 squared is equal to 36. 7 squared is equal to 49. 9 squared is equal to 81. Please click the subscribe button and bell button for notifications. Thank you. For step 6, we find the summation of x squared by adding all numbers in the x squared column. So we just add all numbers. 1 plus 4 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 36 plus 49 plus 81 is equal to the summation of x squared, that is 232. And then we write it down. The summation of x squared is equal to 232. For step 7, we will write the final answer for range. Remember that our formula for range is R is equal to maximum score less the minimum score. We have already computed this earlier. Now R is equal to 9 less 1. Now, R is equal to 8, so our range is equal to 8, and that is our final answer. For step 8, we will solve for the variance and write the final answer. Remember our formula for variance, and then we substitute all the variables that appeared in the formula. First is we substitute the summation of x squared, which we have already computed earlier, and that is 232. So we substitute 232 in the summation of x squared. Next is the summation of x. The summation of x was also computed earlier. So the answer there is 42. Now 42 should be substituted to the quantity of x. Now that looks like 42 squared. Next, we will substitute the two n's that appear in the formula and we know that n is equal to 10. So n is equal to 10 
the other end is also equal to 10. Now that we have all the numbers and we have removed all the variables, we are now ready to compute for variance. Following the PEMDAS rule, first is parenthesis exponent and we can find an exponent there that is 42 squared. So we rewrite s squared is equal to 232 less. Now 42 squared is already equal to 1764 and the denominator 10 still remains there all over 10. Next we don't have any space anymore so our previous computation will appear on the upper right side of the screen. Next is multiplication division. That is still in the PEMDAS rule. And in division of complex fractions, we divide 1764 over 10 first. So S squared is equal to 232 less 176.4 because 176.4 is equal to 1764 divided by 10 and that's all over 10. Next is we subtract the numerators 232 less 176.4 that is equal to 55.6 divided by 10 and then simply divide 55.6 by 10 we find our variance that is equal to 5.56 that is our variance and our final answer for step 9 we are going to solve for the standard deviation and write the final answer remember our formula for standard deviation s is equal to the square root of s squared or that is simply the square root of the variance and remember our variance is 5.56 which means that s is equal to the square root of 5.56. If you are allowed to use a scientific calculator, you can just press the square root sign and then press 5.56 and you will find the square root of 5.56. But if you are in a worst case and not allowed to use a scientific calculator, and you have to get the square root manually. I have a previous video about finding the square root of a number. You can check it in the suggested video above, but let's just assume that you can use your scientific calculator and we find out the standard deviation that is equal to 2.36. And that is our final answer. So before we end our lesson today, let's have a review about our measures of variability. First is the range, that is the difference between the highest and the lowest scores. Second is the variance, that is how spread out or far away a score is from the mean. And the last is the standard deviation, which is the average amount a score differs from the mean. And that's the end of this video. I hope you have learned a lot about the measures of variability. If you have any topics that you want me to discuss, please write it in the comment section below. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.